Hello everyone, so we finally have some Almond Cat on Moto, and the first deck I'm going to play with is pretty sweet. I uh, played with this deck a little bit, and the the initial results were good, made some changes, I think, for the better, so uh, hopefully that will go well. But yeah, basically, uh, if you've been following me at all, you know that I've been working on Red Black Madness a decent amount, and this is what I have right now. So, uh, first thing to note is that there are just a lot of playable cards for this archetype and I don't know I feel like you could come up with like easily four or five different versions of this deck and they'd all potentially be pretty strong but this is where I'm at right now so uh, first and foremost like this deck is aggressive uh, that is basically the plan a the madness theme the, the graveyard theme like those are all just kind of like sub themes for the deck like this is very much a red deck and hopefully you will see that in action so Flame Blade Adept is obviously pretty nice. Uh, second Toughness puts it out of range of early Walking Ballistas, which is nice. Menace on both it and Insolent Neonate uh, give you like this mini evasion sort of thing. Uh, this isn't one of those decks where you're going to be like comboing people with Flame Blade Adept necessarily. It's basically just like one of the turns you get in for two, maybe one of the turns you get in for three, and then as the game goes on longer and longer, you're probably going to get in for like an extra point every other turn, but uh, that just generally ends up being good enough. So uh, I've been very happy with, with the Adept so far. The deck definitely wants to do something on turn one, and Neonate kind of gets sacrificed uh, at some point, like before turn three. So uh, having eight one drops has given me a little bit of consistency, which has been nice. We have uh, Blood Rage Brawler, which is just an absurd card. Uh, two mana, four, three with upside effectively in this deck. So uh, this one has been pretty nice. I can't see myself playing less than four of these. Like, if I play this deck, this is going to be one of the focal, focal points of the deck. And, yeah, again, it just gives you, like, more consistency for your discard outlets, which is great because uh, before it was like, you know, you'd have Smuggler's Copter or whatever. But uh, this thing just kind of does what you want it to do, uh, both beating them down and putting things in your graveyard. Uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger is pretty obvious, I think, uh, is another sort of sticky threat that is not very easy for your opponents to deal with. I mean, there are things like Magma Spray and Cast Out now, uh, so decks have a few more answers than they used to, but Scrappy Scrounger is still quite good. And then we get to the, I guess, I was sorting them by like fake mana cost, like Haunted Dead costs two mana, haha. But uh, this is like a nice little package we have here. So Prize and Amalgam is pretty nice. It, it's it's like a pseudo madness card, you know, like you, you basically only want to discard it. Uh, there are no ways to cast it which could be a mistake potentially, but so far I haven't really had any issues getting it into the graveyard and getting it into play after that. So uh, yeah, Prize and Amalgam Haunted Dead is a pretty uh, common package in decks like this. And not only is it like, you know, basically you want to put Haunted Dead in the graveyard and then Haunted Dead can discard whatever amalgams you have. Uh, so it's, it's pretty consistent in that way where like, instead of having to discard like multiple cards, uh, you basically just need to brawler away a haunted dead, and to that end, I'm also playing a ghoul steed just to be as like more copies of haunted dead. Uh, it's possible that I could play a second ghoul steed too. I think that that is perfectly reasonable. I did not have this in my first version because it was just an oversight. I just forgot that it was a card that existed. So uh, haunted dead is better in that it only costs two mana, so it's much easier to manage things like fiery temper, but. Uh, I do think that Ghoul Steed is going to be serviceable. Uh, we have Hazret on the top end, and one of the weird things about this deck is that uh, you basically don't really ever want to play land 4, so a lot of the time you are just using your resources to bring back Haunted Dead, and if you have Hazret, obviously that changes. You know, like you definitely want to hit land 4 then, and then you just kind of alter your game plan accordingly. Uh, but barring that, I've found that just if you don't have Hazret in the top 10 cards of your deck, then it is entirely possible that you just never play a fourth land. So uh, if you draw Hazret past that point, I mean, it's just more discard fodder for Haunted Dead because eventually they're going to have to start blocking and whatnot. So uh, it hasn't been that bad, and Hazret on its own has been pretty strong. Uh, just a fast clock, a good discard outlet, and a good way to close out the game. And then 
Uh, that's basically all the threats. And we have Lightning Axe, Fiery Temper, and Cut the Ribbons. And Lightning Axe is a card that hasn't seen a ton of play, but I think that that will probably go up, both because Red got a little bit stronger and because there's more stuff to discard favorably in, in that like this deck is it, it feels complete now whereas before it was like oh man I'm missing a few cards but now it's like you have so many cards that you could play with and because I think that this deck will actually be a player that uh, Lightning Axe is a card that's actually going to see some play so uh, there are things like the Felidar Guardian Sahili Rai combo that this breaks up there's Glory Bringer that's obviously a big deal with the new set and this is just one of the cheapest best discard outlets you could possibly play and having something like lightning x fiery temper on turn two or turn three just like completely slows down your opponent which is perfect for you and then the other thing is cut to ribbons and cut is just a solid removal spell on its own again kills fellow our guardian and uh glory bringer but also just like ribbons on the backside is pretty nice and it's kind of weird to say that in this deck where uh, i'm not really interested in playing lands past number three but uh, you know, sometimes, kind of like Hazred, it does come up, and you just get to alter your game plan accordingly, and Ribbons has already finished off some opponents, so overall it's been pretty good. Uh, so yeah, basically just like some creatures, some graveyard synergies, a lot of discard synergies, and some removal spells. Uh, we have 22 land, uh, Canyon Slew combos slightly with the Flame Blade Adepts. Uh, basically, the Slews are fine. You don't really want to get flooded, but you also don't really have a lot of time to just sit here and, like, cycle excess lands. I mean, like, the deck is trying to actually kill your opponent a little bit sooner than that. So uh, it's possible that Slew is not correct, and maybe you want more Smolder Marshes instead, but it felt like, especially since I wasn't interested in playing land 3, that Smoldering Marsh was either getting discarded or it was going to ETB tapped. So... Uh, at that point, if it's almost always going to ETB tapped, then Slew is better. Uh, Slew and Smolder Marsh both reveal two foreboding runes, and if I could play just like 10 of this card, I certainly would. But uh, yeah, m maybe the mix of Slew and Marshes is not correct. And uh, I have nine mountains. I think I could get away with eight and maybe a fifth swamp and uh, having, was it, 13? Yeah, 13 black sources is not super high, especially with my sideboard being a lot of black cards, but... Uh, it has been serviceable so far, so uh, there are a few changes you could make here, depending on what you try and do. Uh, Labor of the Heart, probably better than Transgress the Mind, like almost certainly. Uh, there are decks like Marvel and Blue Eye Control, or Blue X Control, really, and uh, it's fine against the Sahili combo and stuff like that. It's basically just like things that you can't interact with with like your turn five turn six goldfish and with your lightning axes so uh, you do need something to cover you against those things so we have four discard spells and two distended mindbenders and i think mindbender is pretty powerful with things like haunted dead ghoul steed prized amalgam uh again like the black man is kind of an issue i could see playing uh an extra land in my sideboard for things like this but i'm going to try it as is uh, we have by force instead of release the gremlins uh, kind of because of the low land count but also because i don't feel like this deck is really good at grinding so you have some removal some grindy elements but mardu is just a more powerful deck overall and they have enough tools to slow you down that i think you actually just want like this quick burst of like you know kill your scrounger kill your heart of kieran for three mana whereas uh release really wants you to get to five and uh, I had Glorybringer in my sideboard for a little bit, and it, w it did make a lot of sense, basically for the same reason. Like, it is certainly possible that you could board into a red-black control deck and have a higher top end, but I don't think it's completely feasible, so not really trying to do that. So, uh, by force, just to be a cheap answer, uh, Nahiri's Wrath is kind of a similar thing, where I think this is a little bit better against Sahili and decks like that, like decks that actually just put a lot of permanence into play. I've also boarded this in to pretty good success against uh, Green Red Monsters decks and things like that, or uh, like the aggro versions of Green Black Delirium. So Nahiri's Wrath is an interesting one, another pretty good discard outlet. A uh, couple of Key to the Cities, I'm still working on my control plan, uh, Key to the City is part of that. I have Key to the City, a bunch of discard spells, and some maybe some ribbons to finish them off i don't know yet though i feel like i would just want to board in the the hearts the mind bitters and the keys and hopefully that's good enough uh drake haven is kind of an issue 
uh, Authority of the Councils was actually really good against me too. Just allowed them to gain a lot of life and make it to the late game where their big cards just took over. So having something of my own where I could grind a little bit or at least like force through a Blood Rage Brawler through a Torrential Gearhawk is probably good. And then last card is Trespasser's Curse. Uh, this is basically strictly for the Sahili combo. I think that most decks are not going to be well served by bringing in something that's effectively just a direct hate card, but uh, the fact that this card also just goes with your plan A is pretty nice, where you are trying to nickel and dime them out, and this does punish them for playing things like Whirler Virtuoso and stuff like that, and just like going wide in general, so I don't necessarily mind having this card. Uh, it's something that I'm looking to play on like turn three, potentially, after I already have a board presence. Uh, but I do think that something is kind of necessary to stop their combo because that's a lot of ways or a lot of the ways that they can steal a win from you. So uh, don't want too many of them, but I think you know drawing one over the course of a game is certainly fine. Drawing two might mean that you know they'll be able to play around uh, the effect to some degree and maybe like stop at like four life so they don't get fiery tempered out. And uh, since you're down two cards effectively, like it should be pretty easy for them to stabilize and eventually kill you. But yeah, if you draw one with a normal draw, I think it's actually going to be pretty good combo or no. So uh, that's it. Again, uh, deck is still going through some some early uh, like deck building phases and whatnot. So there might be a few things that come up where I'm just like, oh, you know, like I wish I had this card or whatever. But uh, this is basically version three of the deck, and I've been pretty impressed so far. So let's get to it.